Are you looking at the same thing I am? Yes. That's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. And isn't that a stunning gown? Looks as though she just stepped out of Vogue. I wonder who she is. Oh, uh, we don't want to seem rude, but we've been admiring that beautiful girl at the bar. <laughs> Could you tell us who she is? I'm sorry, I should know, but I don't. She comes here every night, always with a different man, always in a new gown, and always just as beautiful. Well, whoever she is, she's doing very well. <laughs> Hello? The truant officer wants to see you. Oh. Oh, yeah, send him right up. You can go up to 305. Go, oh, I can walk. Come in. Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be right in. All right. Oh, is something wrong? Oh, nothing my little boy's done, I hope. Uh, don't tell me Mickey's in trouble. Yes, he is. And this isn't the first time. There are three other counts against your boy. Hmm. Mickey. Now, if you can't handle him, Mrs. Strong, perhaps the juvenile authorities can take care of him. Oh, no, no. Please don't say that. Oh, you wouldn't do that. Well, I... I really... I really don't know what to say. I... Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, Mickey, how can you act this way? I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Oh. But I'll reason with him. I'll make him understand if you'll only give me one more chance. What he needs is a good, strong hand. Yes. Please, just one more chance is all I ask. Well, uh... All right. Just one more chance. Oh, you're so kind, Mr. Officer. Just talk to him like a mother. Good day. Goodbye. Golly, my, you're good. You almost had me believe in you. What's the idea of playing hooky? Well, I don't like school. They treat you like a baby. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I already got plenty of brains. Well, if you're so smart, how'd you get caught? Uh, he sneaked up on me. The sneak. I was carrying this thing. What's that? Beer bottles. What's the idea? The guy opened the door for testing gives me two cents apiece for them. Where'd you get them? Just found them. Why, you cheap little thief. Where did you get this? Golly, Letty, I had to have something to carry him. Why, Mickey, that's one of my best nightgowns. What do you mean? Oh. Get over there. Hey, come here. Oh, no, 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 what you get for getting funny. Why, oh, that's nothing. If you're gonna dish it out, you gotta be able to take it. Yeah, I know. But you shouldn't kick your mother, Mickey. Why not? She always told me to fight back when anyone takes a poke at me. Sure. That's right. Beat him to the punch every time. Come here. You know, Mick, sometime... You... Someday you're gonna thank me for all the things I've told you. Someday you're going to know that what your mother has taught you to take a lot of the rough edges off the hard knocks. I don't have to wait for someday. I think you're swell right now. Yeah, I'm going to go through what I did. Not if I can help it. What did you go through, Ma? Clothes ringer. You mean somebody really put you through a clothes ringer? Sure. 
Who was it? The big stiff? I'd like to take a sock at him. A <laughs> man you never knew, darling. A man who went away before I found him. Ooh, six o'clock. Gotta get dressed. Hello? Oh, Steve? Wanna talk to Lenny? Just a minute. Hey, Ma, Steve, wanna talk to him? Yeah, bring me a call. I'm okay, Stevie. How are you? How was the fight last night? Wouldn't any go? Come on, give me that. Hello? <clears throat> yeah, I'm taking a bath. Who, Max? Where's he from? In Detroit. I told St. Louis I'd see him tonight. Oh, you mean Hirschbaum? Oh, forget about him. I got his order. Now, this new guy buys for two of the biggest apartment stores in the Middle West. And there'll be plenty in it for you, too. Is he one of those idea guys? I'll say he is. He's just full of ideas. No wisecracks now. I'll have you know I'm strictly a model. <laughs> and what a model. Say, Steve, you know that little gray crepe number? Yeah, number 37. Well, I spilled gin all down the front of it. You better send me up another one. Okay, baby. All right. Bye. Don't make it. Don't do that. Leave that alone. Go on, John. Get out of here. Oh. Go on. Get out of here. Hello, Fuzzy Face. Ma, Fuzzy Face is here. Hello, Letty. Hello, Fuzzy. I'll be out in a minute, Fuzzy. Well, well. How's my little boy? Hey, oh. <laughs> I got something for you. Something nice. Something for a good little boy. A very good copy of Van Hans Brinker. You don't say. Any pictures in it? Hello, Fuzzy. Uh, How long was it? Oh, Letty, you're beautiful. Simply beautiful. Like it? Do I like it? <laughs> Takes my breath away. Oh, Fuzzy. Letty, I got I got three tickets for the seventh row in the center. And it's to hear Misha Elman. Oh. <gasps> What a great artist. Mmm, so tender and, and so true. Come on, Fuzzy, hook me up, will you? Sure. Here, I'll do it myself. Please don't think I'm trying to intrude, Letty, but you know, you couldn't be any closer to me if you was my own daughter and Mickey was my own son. And... I know, darling, we think you're swell. Well, what I'm going to say to you isn't so pleasant, but it's been on my mind for a long time and I've got to get it all. Well, sure, go ahead. It's about Mickey. Yeah? He's the talk of the neighborhood, Letty. He smokes, he don't go to school, he runs around with a lot of roughnecks that's mm -hmm. older than he is, and he's always in trouble. And... Oh, is that all? Is that all? If you're trying to raise him to be a first-rate scoundrel with a complete lack of ethics and morals, you're certainly succeeding. The poor little fella don't know good from bad, and if he finally lands in prison, he can thank you. Anything else? Plenty. So fuzzy. In that first year when you worked in my bookstore and lived with me, it was different. You were different. Mickey was different. He was a nice little baby and you were a nice little girl. You think I'm a doddering old fool. A Butinsky, maybe. Well, you're wrong. I ain't so dumb. I know you can't wear the clothes you wear and do the things you do and not pay for it one way or the other. Now, if you want to ruin your own life, it's a shame, and I'm sorry. But it's your life, and you can do what you want with it. But I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of Mickey. You're not being fair to him. You're cheating. You don't deserve a child. All right. You've made your little speech, now I'll make mine. Everything you've said about Mickey is absolutely true. Sure, he has no honor, no sense of ethics. Furthermore, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus. He knows the stocks don't bring babies. I told him the truth, Fuzzy. I've told him everything is a fake. He knows all the questions and all the answers. And when he grows up to be a man, if anybody puts anything over on him, it won't be because I didn't tell him. Honor and decency, that's a lot of hash. What does it ever get me? I was reared right. My people told me everything except how to protect myself in the clinches. Did they ever tell me what to really expect from life? Did they ever suggest it might be a case of the survival of the fittest? Did they ever tell me if you don't do, you're gonna get done? No, they told me nothing. And what happened? The first time I met with a real problem in life, I went down for the count. Well, you know what happened. I wound up on your doorstep in the rain, cold and hungry. 
15 years old with a baby about to be born. No husband, no money, and nobody I could go to. If it hadn't been for you, there wouldn't be any Mickey or any me. Oh, boy, that's what I call a swell start in life. Oh, believe me, nothing like that's going to happen to my boy, not if I can prevent it. He's going to be so darn smart by the time he's of age that he won't have to worry. Furthermore, if I can never get my hands on a big enough bankroll, we're going to be so darn respectable and honest it'll hurt. Gee, you've got an awful lot to learn, Letty. Someday you're going to wake up and realize what a mistake you made. Mickey, get Fuzzy a glass of beer, will you? I've got mixed, see? And I can't afford it before anymore. You mustn't take life so seriously. Nothing matters very much. Maybe not to you, but to me it matters. And another thing, stop worrying about other people, will you? Oh, I'm sorry about tonight, Fuzzy. Really, I am. But we'll make it next Tuesday night for sure, huh? Just go out of here. Yeah, he just went out. Oh. Poor Fuzzy. I guess I hurt his feelings now. What do you mean, hurt his feelings? Oh, nothing. Let it go. I'll drop by his bookstore in the morning. Hey, Ma, he ain't no kin to us, is he? No. He's all right, though. How long have you known him, Ma? Oh, just about as long as I've known you. I met him the same day. Where? Same place I met you. In his bookstore. That's why we're such good pals. You like him, don't you? Sure, I like him. Almost as much as I like you, honey. But how did it happen, Ma? <laughs> it's a long story, honey. I was walking down the street one day, Mick. It was pouring. I was feeling kind of wet, too. When you came along. Floating down the gutter on a cabbage leaf. All wrapped up in cellophane. Old Fuzzy Face took us in and gave us both a place to sleep. Really, Ma? Is that how I met you? <laughs> Something like that. You were born in the back room of his bookstore, honey. amalgamated dairy truck wasn't to blame for this accident. As a matter of fairness, we are willing to... Mr. Strong, we'll do anything. Get the best doctors you can. It doesn't matter how much it costs. Just a minute, please. We are willing to make a reasonable settlement in this case, Mrs. Strong. Oh, how can you come up here and speak of money? Settlements with my baby lying in there. Doctor, they no decency, no consideration. They think I care how much money they're willing to pay. Now, madam, if you let our doctor... Get out of here! Wait a minute, I'll handle this. You, what can you do? Well, you see, Mrs. Strong, uh, I happen to be president of the Amalgamated Dairies. The reason I was driving my truck, I can explain by saying that I make it a point every so often to check every phase of my business. And yesterday, unfortunately, it was driving a truck. Believe me, Mrs. Strong, I I'm greatly concerned about your boy. And I want to do everything in my power to help you. I don't want to spare any expense. If the boy needs a specialist. I am a specialist, Mr. Trevor's my name, oh, sir. Oh, this is Dr. Steele, Mr. Trevor. How do you do? Yes, Mr. Trevor, I have handled a great many cases of this type. Mrs. Strong, I, I, I know this is hardly the time to discuss money, but if you need me, please reach me here any time, will you? Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Strong. 
Bye. Come on, Lee. Mr. Trevor. Yes, well, I'll talk to you about that outside. Goodbye. You were wonderful. I'll send the lawyer up to see you right away. Mm. And don't talk to anyone in the meantime. I got to Doc. No. I won't say a word. No. I'll pay you, no, Doc. No, no, no. This is strong. You can settle with me later. Oh, I understand. Later. Mm hmm. Young man, you get back into bed. Come on, get in there. Talk to you anyway. Look, Ma, the big lug broke my skin. Well, never mind that for a minute. Listen, Nick, you'd like an automobile, wouldn't you? Would you like to go to Coney Island whenever you wanted to with enough money so that you could do just as you wanted? What are you driving at, Ma? Well, listen, sweetheart. If you were really hurt, if your leg was smashed up so that you couldn't walk, the company that ran over you'd have to pay a lot of money, wouldn't they? See? Would that mean you and me could go places together and you wouldn't always be running out every night with Steve and all those guys? <laughs> sure, honey. We'd be together always then, every night, all the time. With money enough to do as we please, and I wouldn't even have to look at Steve and those other palookas. I got you, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, my next witness will be Michael Strong, the little boy who, who has suffered so keenly by this accident. Take it easy. Give me your help, will you please? Thank you. I want you to tell me... Oh, don't be afraid of those people there. They're all your friends. Sure, they're your friends. Now, Mickey, I want you to tell me how you feel. I feel all right, except for my leg. And sometimes a headache. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt anymore much here. But sometimes it feels like needles and pins right here. Uh -huh. Mickey? How long is it since you've been able to play with other little boys? I don't remember. It's a long time. What were the things you used to like to do before this truck ran over you? I used to like to run and play and roller skate and go to school. I guess I miss school most of all. Now, tell me one more thing, Mickey. I'd like to know. How old are you? Seven and a half. Now, tell me, Mickey, can you read and write? I used to, but I forgot how. I get a headache when I try to read or look at pictures. That'll be all, Mickey. Cross-examination? No questions, Your Honor. Tell me. Oh, Mickey! No! Oh, oh, Mickey. Darling. You murderer! You murderer! Oh, God, you look like you've done! I can choke you! Oh, orders! Orders! The jury will ignore the scene they have just witnessed. Your Honor, we concede the fact that this boy and his mother would be entitled to damages provided the testimonies we have been hearing were based upon the truth, but they are not. The testimonies are completely and intentionally false. That statement I can prove, if the court will permit me to darken this room. I have some moving pictures which I wish to display as evidence as to the soundness of this boy. Your Honor, I object. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 
reliable witnesses, Your Honor. Authentic data of every nature to prove that the motion picture film which you are about to witness was taken after the accident. Defendant, back in the room. Draw those curtains. Your Honor, this was taken 11 days after the accident. This was taken 15 days after the accident. And we have reputable witnesses to prove this statement. Look, Ma, I did it. Order. Your Honor, I object. This is immaterial, irrelevant, and inconsequential, and has no bearing on the case. Objection overruled. Let it, let it, let it. No, oh, could you? We've had enough of this. Open those shades. In all my years as a jurist, I have never witnessed such a flagrant abuse of the court. Such a perjurous scheme to obtain money under false pretenses. As a justice, I feel it my duty to turn this matter over to the criminal authorities for prosecution. And I can find no words too severe to label a woman who would permit her child to be dragged into such proceedings. To teach her child to lie. A woman like you doesn't deserve a child. And furthermore, I am going to do all in my power to see that your boy is taken away from you. Ma, the one with the glasses says the sidewalk's all around the place. Oh, Mick. Cut it out, Ma, will you? What do those dames think? Oh, Mick. Don't you care? Even a little bit. You don't think I like the idea of being cooped up, do you? I know. I'll get you out of there, though. They can't take you away from me. Nobody living here. You will have to hurry. We can't wait all day. All right, all right. Now listen, you. Remember everything I told you. Use your head. I'll get with you somehow. I do. You be ready, see? I got you, Ma. Get your skates, honey. You wanted to look these over? Oh, yes, thanks. Anything else? Oh, Mrs. Strong came back again. Mm -hmm. I told her quite definitely you wouldn't see her. But she's a... Yes, yes, I know. Don't say it. I'll attend to those in the morning. Anything further? No, that's all. Thanks, Miss Crawford. I just want to get out of here. Good night. Good night.
I beg your pardon. I thought you were told... Don't... Yeah, I know. You don't want to see me. Well, you're quite right, I don't. Well, that's too bad, because you're going to. You've got to help me, and I'm going to make you help me. Mrs. Strong, I've avoided seeing you because I could think of nothing I can do for you. And as for your boy, Mickey, it was the court that took him from you, not me. You could have stopped that. You could have told the court it wasn't necessary to take my kid away from Even me. Even if you weren't talking nonsense, why should I have interfered? Am I responsible for the life you've led? I just think these melodramatic antics are going to get you any place. Maybe now you'll believe me. I want my kids, see? You're going to write a letter to that judge and tell him to give him back to me. Get I want Mickey. Gun down. Stay there or I'll plug you. I swear I will. If you come and gun. Well, you're not as tough as you thought you were. I'm not trying to be tough. I want Mickey. You don't know what it is wanting your kid. No, I guess not. I can't sleep or eat or think. The only thing I can think of is that kid up there. I've only seen him on Sundays like he's in jail. My baby in jail. I'm going nuts, I tell you. Won't you do something? Do anything only get him out of here. Well, there's one way. What? Anything, Mr. Trevor. I'll do anything. Anything you say only get him out of there, please, Mr. Trevor. All anything right, you say. All I'll... right, I'll do what I can. Sit down and let's talk this over sensibly. I can't do a thing like this. I can't let sentiment rule. It's a case of right or wrong. Well, she's an attractive woman, I know, but she's not capable of raising a child decently. Why, well, he's full of the devil right now. Rough, hard as nails, seven years old. What'll he be when he gets to 20? Well, I had him sent over. Would you like to talk to him? Mm-hmm. Let's have the matron bring in Mrs. Strong's boy. He's a tough brat. But I must admit, he's smart as a whip. Hello, Mickey. Remember me? Sure. You're the guy we all thought was a sucker. <laughs> Say, whatever became of those movies? Oh, they're around somewhere, I guess. Would you like to have them? You bet. Well, I'll see what I can do about it. How's your leg? My leg's all right. If it wasn't for those movies, everything would have been swell. Come over here, Mickey. What's the matter with you? Aren't they treating you nicely around here? Ah, oh, they're okay. Only I don't like the idea of being cooped up. You miss your mother? Sort of. Is there any way I can get charge of this boy? You mean yourself? Yes. Well, you could adopt him, if his mother didn't object. Or well, for that matter, I could give you a court order. If you'll take the full responsibility of raising him. How'd you like that, Mickey? How'd you like to come and stay with me? Where do you live? Oh, out in the country. Is it far from New York? No, not so far. How about my mother? Did she come too? Sure, she can come and see you any time at all. Okay, I'll go. Well, now, wait a minute. There are a couple of things I have to fix, you see. I have a wife. No, I guess she'd be agreeable. You see, Mickey, we haven't any little boy of our own. The sooner the better. Okay.
Get a load of the waddle, Ma. All right, now pipe down, will you? We know he doesn't mean anything bad. If he gave me a hundred million, trillion, billion dollars, I wouldn't wear union suits. I don't blame you, Mickey. Now, how about itch. the bathroom before you catch cold? I want you to feel free to come and see Mickey any time you wish, Mr. Strong. Thanks. Because we know how glad Mickey is to see you. Yep. He's only been with us a couple of days, but we're pretty fond of him already. We want him to love us, too. Pardon me, Mama, will you please? Come here, sweetheart. Mama wants to talk to you. I'll be back tomorrow. Make it around 4 o'clock. I'm supposed to take a nap then. Okay. I'll meet you right outside the main gate, see? Okay, Ma. Mrs. Trevor? Go on, beat it, kid. Mickey, please stop teasing. Wait a minute, young man. What's all this? It's all my own stuff. Let me go, will you? Let me go. You can keep it. All but the skates. Uh-huh. I think we better take a little walk up the hill. Come on. So you see, Mickey, it's all a matter of how you think. Oh, there's no harm in taking the things you feel you need or in going to see your mother. The idea of sneaking about it, trying to be clever. You don't have to be clever with us. And you're not sore at me because I copped all that junk? No. I don't blame you for taking a lot of nice things to your mother. That's a pretty good idea. Only you don't have to sneak them. Gee whiz, I'm sorry, Mr. Trevor. You're just trying to make me feel good now. It's like copped all your junk. It isn't my junk, Mickey. It's ours, yours too. You see, you're one of us now. Do you understand? After all, you wouldn't steal something that was your own, would you? Golly, you make me feel like a heel. Oh, now, Mickey, you're not a heel. You're a good boy, isn't he, dear? Mickey can be anything he wishes to be. There's one thing, though, Mickey. Make me a promise. Give me a word that you won't try to run away again. You see, I made a promise. I promised I'd look after you. And if you run away, then I've broken my word. And if I can help it, I never go back on my word. If you'd gotten away, that would have been a reflection on me. When you want to see your mother, you can, any time. Now, Mickey, will you give me your word, your word of honor, that you won't try to run away again? I promise. Okay, that's all I want, your promise. Now, go on, run along, get your nap. Even hit me, a big squealer. And all the stuff I had in that pillowcase is mine. See? Everything around here is mine. All that grass and everything. And I can go out this gate any time I want to. See? You ask the big shot. Okay. It's up to Mr. Trevor. <laughs> hey, come on, move, will you? I said four o'clock, not five. Really, Ma, I'm sorry. I tried to get here. But I got caught. Hmm. Swiping a lot of cheap junk again, huh? No, but you see, in the house... Well, was... never mind. Come on. I can't go now like this. What do you mean you can't go? Get in here, will you? No, Ma, I can't. Say, what are you giving me, Mickey? I can't run away like this. I promised Mal I wouldn't. What do you mean, promise? I gave him my word. My word of honor. 
You mean you don't want to go away with me? No, it isn't that, Ma. But I'm in a spot. I gave him my word that I wouldn't try any funny business. And you can't break your word of honor. You gave me your word of honor, did you? Mm -hmm. Why, I haven't slapped the daylights out of you, you little brat. Turned on me like a stranger. There's nothing wrong with Mal. He's all right. You're all wet. Oh, right wait a minute, Ma. Ma. Yeah, everything you've been telling me is a oh, lot of bull. Shut your mouth. Get out of car. Wait a minute. Uh, Where are you going? Who wants to know? Oh, a flat foot. Yeah, he's a couple more. Come on, let's go up to the house. Oh, cut it, will you? I'm not interested in what you think is right or wrong. That kid's mine, not yours. Oh, you're bad. Bad all the way through. You're just a beautiful, bad girl. Oh, yeah? You can't come here again. Oh, can't I? Well, you just watch me. Mick is mine now. You've got to understand that. He's mine, and I'm going to keep him. I wish I'd killed you when I had the chance. Yes, well, it's a little too late to do anything about You're that. You're the one who started all this trouble. Mickey and I were getting along swell before you came along. Do you realize that he didn't want to go away with me? He didn't want his own mother. Don't you see you're taking my kid away from me? Oh, yes, Betty, I know. Get away I... from me. You've given him things that I couldn't because you're rich. And what could he do? He's only a little kid, and he doesn't know any better. Betty, please. Now he's gone away from me. Oh, gone no. as much as if you'd killed him. Oh, I understand. Sure, I'm mad, but he didn't think so. He thought I was swell. And since you came along, he... Yeah. Betty! Betty! Betty, what's the matter? Oh. Hello, Steve. Letty. Say, listen, I'm out at the Trevor home and I'm going to stay here for a couple of days. Yeah. Well, never mind what happened. I fainted. Is that good enough? I want you to do something for me. Pack a suitcase and send it out here right away. Yeah, all right. And listen, don't forget to put an evening dress in. Right. I'm not interested in the money angle. I want Mickey. Will you listen to me? It's a fact. Listen to me. I'm talking to you like it's my own daughter, my own flesh and blood. Such an opportunity a girl never had in her whole lifetime. Oh, don't worry. You'll get your kid back. And on top of that, you'll get yourself a fortune besides. <laughs> Even if the kid got killed, positively you wouldn't be so well off. Okay, what is this brainstorm of yours? Oh, it's no trick. It's a simple matter of pushing a button. The trick is for you to get him to make love. Go ahead. Well, just to get him to make love, that's not enough. The trick is to get evidence, proof, that he's making the wrong kind of love. Darling, I love you. Every time I see you, I get goose pimples. <laughs> that means nothing. But if he says, darling, I've got to have you. I can't stand it. And, and you got him panting like a fox. <laughs> that already means money in the bank. Mm hmm Okay, get your contraption. Sort of a rotten trick to play on his wife, isn't it? You should worry about her. Didn't they go around sneaking like a snake, taking pictures all day of your kid? Okay, you're the doctor. All right. I'll leave everything here with you. I'll take the cord with me and the tools. So not so loud, not so loud. All right, all right. I'll, I'll just put these things away. And I want to take this old cord with me, too. Oh, I don't. Hurry up, will you? I can alibi your beat. Yeah. Come yeah. on, I get it. Yeah. You better take some of these records with you. You might use them. All right. Come on, get out. Mm. Come on, get out of here. All right, all right. Get what the woman. All right, all right, all right. Well? Sit down. We really haven't much time. We have some guests to you here now. Oh, sit down here with me. Say, hey, what's troubling you? You know what it is. I want Mickey. I can't stay here. You know that. Well, I guess not. Oh, I can't give him up. Every time I think of it, I'm sick. I'll do anything, Mal. Anything you say, I mean it. All you have to do is say the word. Wait a minute. That isn't necessary. Oh, give him back to me, please. No, I've got to go. What's the matter with you? You afraid of me? And when you get out this time, stay out.
Malcolm. Hello. Who's that pretty girl in the doorway? Oh, excuse me, dear. Just a minute. Hey, what's the meaning of this? Oh, hello. Am I welcome? You weren't invited, were you? Well, I thought as long as I was leaving tomorrow, what's the difference? That's well, I suppose this comes under the heading of madness. Oh, no, it's sane. Very sane. Are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. About you? Do you realize what you're doing? Perfectly. Oh, should we? Now, what do you want? You? You're being ridiculous. Why? What's ridiculous about that? Either go to your room or leave the house now. Oh, no. You don't want me to go, Mal. Daddy. I've done everything possible to make this very difficult situation easier for you. Mm, I know you have. And all I want to do is show you my gratitude. Don't you want my gratitude, Mal? No, I don't. Because you're cheap and you're dishonest. You're a thorough... Sure little... I am. What woman isn't about the man she loves? Come in. Hiya. It's that music. Would you mind shutting it off? I'm not disturbing anyone, am I? Yes, you are. I'll stop it. No, no, no. I'll turn it off. I was afraid you'd gone to sleep. I couldn't. I tried, but I couldn't. I do love you, Letty. I'm mad about you. Oh, Letty, listen, please. You've got a wife. Nothing matters but you. No, 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 stop it, please. I can't help it, Daddy. I love you. Oh. Come in. You want to see me, Ma? Yeah, Mick, I want you to pack your things. We're leaving. I don't want to go now, Ma. Don't argue with me. Go and get your things. You're going with me. I fixed that once and for all. Let's wait till my birthday. Mal said he was going to give me a pony. Well, you do as I tell you before you get something you won't forget. Get out of here. Well, what's wrong, Mickey? Mal, Ma says I've got to go. Do I, Mal? I don't have to. Do I? Oh, I'll talk to your mother. Go on, run on downstairs. Watch out. She's burned about something. Okay. Come in. Eddie, what's all this about Mickey? You told me to get out of here last night, didn't you? 
Well, I'm going to see you. I don't need a second invitation. What's more, I'm taking Mickey with me. Daddy, you can't do that. Say, listen, I've been putting up with your drivel long enough. I'm sick and tired of it. I've taken a lot of it, see? But I don't have to take any more. Not after last night. Wait a minute, Daddy. Listen to me, will you? I want to tell you something. After last night, you and I are just the same. There's no difference at all. Get it? I'm taking that kid with me, see? And you or no one else is going to stop me. No, you can't do it. Oh, can't I? Well, you just try something to see what happens. You wouldn't like me to have a little talk with your wife, would you, Mel? Daddy, I told her. What do you mean, told her? I told her everything this morning. I had to. Are you out of your mind? Daddy, I love you more than ever. I told you that last night and I meant it. Do you understand? No, I don't understand. I'm all mixed up. Oh, dear, there's nothing to be mixed up about. It'll all work out, believe me. Alice understands. You're going to have Mickey and me, and you're not going to have to fight and struggle anymore. Oh, no, I can't believe it. It isn't true you're wanting me, Mel. You don't know what you're saying. Get into your clothes. We're going into town. Well, Mel said it was all fixed to stay. It is all fixed. We're coming back. Why don't you go, Mom? Let me stay here. We're coming back, I tell you. I don't want to go. I'm going swimming without it. Well, so you'd rather go with her than you would with me, would you? You come here to me. Come here to me, Mickey. I don't have to do what you, you say anymore. Who says so? You're not putting me anymore. Mel isn't. He said no, I was going to do with it. You're my kid. You're going to do what I think. Come here. Come here to me. Mickey! about Mel. Coming from you, that ought to be pretty valuable. If you're wise enough to take it, you may be able to hold him. Well, maybe a year. What do you mean, a year? Possibly not even a year. I don't think he'll be able to stand you that long. But if you're smart... Smart enough to get what I wanted. No, not smart. You just have good health, youth, and you're a female. Say, so what are you trying to say? You're bad, that's all. You have no rules. If you have no rules in one thing, you probably have no rules in any other. That won't do. Not with Mel. Mel's what's called a gentleman. A man with decent, proper instincts. And you're an ill-bred little tramp. Who did he pick? You or the tramp? Neither. You picked him. Almost any woman can pick almost any man. Your way. It's the cheap way, used by cheap women. But it won't last. Men like Mel are after diamonds, not rhinestones. You say another word and I'll tear your eyes out. You're a common little beast and I intend to tell you. Sounds like I swallowed the ocean, all right. Feel a little better, don't you? He'll be all right. Thank you, Doctor. Still so, Ma? Sure. What's the matter to you? At who? Myself. Oh, you'll get over that. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I, I'm awful grateful. He wouldn't be alive now except for you. I want you to know that no matter how rotten you think I am, I, I do appreciate it. That's all right. 
You're pretty white, aren't you? If I was in your spot after what happened, I... I think I'd want to commit murder. You mean about Malcolm? Yeah. He hasn't done anything to hurt me. Nobody has. You mean you don't love him? I'll always love him. Love him more than anything in the world. I don't get you. Well, it just happened. You've given him something that, that I couldn't. Something he's always wanted. A little boy. Mickey. This, what I'm going through, it isn't too much to make Mal happy. You see? Yeah, I see. I see a lot of things all of a sudden. Oh, you certainly give me an education, Miss Trevor, and I don't mean maybe. They do I, Ma? What's the matter, Ma? You act like you got the pip. <laughs> Maybe I have. Mick, you like it here, don't you? And how? And Malcolm, you like him too, don't you? Sure, don't you? And you like Alice too. Alice is okay. I'll be back in a minute, honey. Union suit. There's a Mr. Carnes waiting downstairs. Oh, well, tell him I'll be right down. There's some bags in my room. Thank you. You didn't tell me Steve was coming up for you, Ma. Nick, I'm blowing. You can't do that, Ma. What would Mal say? I don't know if you know it, Ma. But Mal's nuts about you. Yeah? Well, I'm glad somebody around here likes me. Golly, Ma, that ain't no way to talk. Why, Mick, why? Well, right. Oh, please, Aunt Darling, please, just once. Well, I don't want you to go either. More than ever since, since you're so different. I'm glad you don't want me to go, Mick. That makes me feel swell, honest, it does. But I got to, honey, it's right. What do you mean, right, Ma? Well, I don't belong here. I don't fit. You know, all that stuff I told you about being hard dishing it out and being able to take it. Yeah. Sure, well, that's well for someone like me, but not you, honey. It isn't right. It's all wrong. I know. I'm glad you found it out, Ma. I guess you've been talking to somebody. Sure. I've been wrong about a lot of things. You really stuck on them, aren't you, Ma? Ah, oh, don't be silly. You can't fool me. You were never this way about Steve or any of them other guys. Listen, Mick. Malcolm's a wonderful man. From now on, you do what he says, see? Golly, Ma, you scare me. You act like you're going to the North Pole. Oh, or no, I'm not going to the North Pole. But I'm going away. Ain't you coming back? <laughs> 
Oh, sure, honey. Sure, I'm coming back. Sometime, maybe, if it's right. Don't go, Ma, please. Oh, now, Mickey, don't cry. Don't <laughs> cry, Mickey. If you do, I'll thank you. I've got you, Ma. Oh, baby. Goodbye, you big baby. Well, well, hello, hello. Hello. What's all the rush? Nothing. What happened? Nothing. I'm going into town, that's all. Can't I even go to town without asking you? Let me go, will you? Not until you've told me. All right, I'll tell you. I'm leaving here, see? I'm beating it. I don't like it here anymore. Daddy, Daddy you can't do Oh, that. Mel, stop kidding yourself, will you? You certainly aren't dope enough to think I'd bury myself in a spot like this. With a guy like you? I've got nuts in a week. Nettie, please. I'll oh, cut it. What do you care, anyway? I'm bad. You said it yourself. But I was born that way. And what's more, I don't care. I like it. I think it's fine. <laughs> you ought to count yourself lucky, big boy. Now, are you going to get out of my way, or am I going to have to make you get out of my way? Oh, Nettie. Nettie, you're talking like a fool. You know I love you, and you love... Love you? Oh. Sure, I love you, Mel. For an hour. Maybe I could love you for another hour. Who knows? Well, that's all. Already I love another guy. I don't even know what he looks like. I don't know whether he's tall or short or young or old. But I do know he's got a suite on a boat, and he's willing to take me to Paris and show me a marvelous time, and that suits me swell. You go with another man. Certainly huh? I go with another man. Why not? Oh, Mel, you'll get over this. You'll get over this just like Mickey got over the measles. You're just in time for some supper. Come on. I'm not hungry, Fuzzy. Oh, good strong cup of coffee. No, really. Fuzzy, do you think I could have my old job back? Could you? I'll say you could. <laughs> I'll get you a cup of coffee. All right. What's happened to Mickey, Letty? Well, she's taking a vacation in the country. What else could you do with an old cradle? <laughs> Remember the time when Mickey first climbed over the side and crawled? <laughs> He's always a cute little baby, wasn't he? Yeah. 